let's talk about Godzilla. In August 2016, Toho announced they would be making an anime series based on their most renowned kaiju. Fans leaned towards an interest since it was something we'd never seen before outside of the Americanized cartoon series. Plus, we wouldn't be seeing another legendary Godzilla film for another three years. Toho, alongside animation studio Polygon, stated that it would be the first in a new trilogy that wouldn't be tied down to any existing Godzilla media. Anime is a great source for character-driven content that can take viewers to other worlds, time periods, with incredibly imaginative visual storytelling. There is an entire community that could open up to learning more about the King of the Monsters. There's already a fantastic long-running anime series centered around monsters with kaiju elements like Attack on Titan and Evangelion. So when we first heard that Toho, the original creators of Godzilla, would be at the helm of their very own anime series, we thought it was a dream come true. With anime that could bring us visuals never seen before in a Godzilla film, and they wouldn't be limited to the same restrictions a live-action film might entail. We waited over a year for information regarding the film, which had been titled Planet of the Monsters, and the synopsis sounded promising. The human race takes to the stars and abandons Earth after Godzilla wrecks havoc upon the planet. Thousands of years later, they return from space to destroy the giant monster and to reclaim their home. It sounded incredibly unique, ripe for potential to be an action-packed, cinematic and character-driven story. Humans driven to desperation on the brink of collapse, involving countless monsters both old and new. Some were skeptical since the synopsis sounded so extraordinary for a Godzilla film, but were otherwise intrigued by the idea. So, what were people's reactions to the series? Oh no, 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 no. No, 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 oh, no, no, no. The series left fans divided, to say the least. So what went wrong? Well, the first thing that stands out to me are the characters. Our protagonist is a young hothead that has a deep hatred for the evil that killed his family. He's reckless but strong-willed, and won't let anyone distract him from his goal of defeating the enemy, and avenging his family in hopes of returning humanity to its former freedom. Eren Yeager. I mean, um, Haruo Sakaki. Haruo has been called Eren Yeager Light from viewers and the similarities are undeniable. The writers had an opportunity to have an intelligent and strong leader that's pushed to his very limits throughout the series, however what we got was a loudmouthed and overall pretty bland character whose only motivation is kill Godzilla. There's nothing that sets him apart from the characters seen in other shows, in fact, it's watered down here. Haru also has a love interest in the film called Yuko Tani. I put love interest in quotes because it's barely touched upon and they expect the viewer to feel an emotional response when she meets her demise, when in fact, it's not deserved. The only one that seems remotely interesting is a member of an alien race called the Exif, Metfis, who's the only one that appears to have any form of depth, an ulterior motive that makes you question his intentions. Plot The plot on paper sounds interesting. Humans leave Earth due to Godzilla basically wrecking havoc across the globe, so they go find another planet to call home, but on the journey they run out of resources and decide to turn around in hopes that Godzilla has died due to thousands of relative years they've been away. But upon returning they find that the planet has evolved to basically reject any kind of human life. The plants are made out of a material similar to metal that's so sharp it'll cut through even the human's most advanced armour. There's even sentient life forms that have evolved from plant matter, ranging from simple worm-like specimens to a dragon-like form that attacks the human base, said to have a genetic matchup 97% identical to Godzilla. Now doesn't this all have the makings for a great series? Well, if you like humans talking a lot, this is exactly the film for you. They spend most of their time arguing and discussing what plan they should go with, with the only tension being based around whether people agree or disagree with said plan. 
it's not enough for us to connect with the characters or deal with any moral issues we're faced with based on the characters' decisions. The film takes interesting ideas and cuts them down. When we heard that Mechagodzilla would be in the film, City on the Edge of Battle, we were all excited. We saw promo images, it took a lot of creative liberties, but we were willing to accept it as a new form of Mechagodzilla. What did we get in the film? A city. Don't know what I mean? Well, in the thousands of years that the humans were away, the metal used to create Mechagodzilla has become sentient and managed to program itself into its own enormous city, even equipped with defences. The idea itself was great, and fans were intrigued to see what it'd be like in the film, yet we waited for Mechagodzilla throughout the whole film. But it never showed up. That new design in the promotional material, never seen. In the third film, titled The Planet Eater, we were promised the most famous Godzilla antagonist, King Ghidorah, something that has all the necessary ingredients to give the series the climatic final act it so very needed. But what did we get in the film? A vampire noodle. Coming from a different universe as a god being worshipped by the Exif, Ghidorah broke all laws of our reality and in doing so was unable to be touched by Godzilla. So all Ghidorah did was leech onto him and drain his energy, not exactly what fans were hoping for. As for that promotional image of King Ghidorah in his full form, never seen. Stuff like this just rubbed fans the wrong way, they promised us something epic and just didn't deliver in the way it should have. And even if it was aimed for a more Japanese-centric audience, it failed at that too, flopping massively at the box office, with City on the Edge of Battle being the worst performing Godzilla film, pulling in at a mere 8th position at the box office. Though to be fair, it was never intended to be a blockbuster film like the live-action ones that came before it, though it is still a statement on the lack of faith the audience had on the anime series. It doesn't help the fact that the series uses entirely 3D animation disguised as traditional 2D anime. It just feels lazy. Though it's definitely not the worst implementation of 3D animation stylized to look like traditional manga animation, not by a long shot. Now there are some things this series does get right. Notice how I haven't talked about the King of the Monsters himself just yet. That's because every scene with him in is fantastic. The moment you first see him is terrifying, the sense of scale is spot on, and he's probably the most durable and powerful Godzilla ever devised. The way he slowly lumbers around, the sound of the earth shifting and breaking around him, the way that people react to him and cower with such fear, it's all brilliant. You truly feel the fear behind Godzilla here, and whilst he represents an unstoppable force of nature, similar to Legendary's Godzilla, here you really feel the fear. He is a real monster. As poor the execution of the plot is, I do really love the narrative. The story is told through three acts, Planet of the Monsters, City on the Edge of Battle, and The Planet Eater. The overarching story involves the humans essentially trying to reclaim their place on Earth, and it shows them trying everything they can to complete that task. We see the humans start off in a place of desperation, their people are dying, there's a lack of food, sickness is spreading through the ship, and people are clinging to the tiny hope that planet Earth will welcome them with open arms, and that Godzilla had since died of old age. Obviously they were wrong, and their hope was quickly crushed as they prepared for war against the King of the Monsters. Throughout the series we see humanity slowly being picked off, their forces decrease as their men are killed in battle, and they get increasingly more desperate, until the final film where the only way they can win is by submitting to Godzilla and becoming one with nature, realising that moving on from their past of violence is the only way to move forward. Looking at the story as a whole, I think it's fantastic, we've never seen such a massive global impact being made because of Godzilla. There is no holding back with who dies in this series. Old people are killed so the rest can have more food, civilians including families with children are killed off unceremoniously by King Ghidorah. It's brutal. These events only make the human's mission feel way more hopeless, and it's actually very refreshing. In today's world where superheroes keep winning over unfathomable odds, it's fresh to see our expectations being pushed aside. We see things get worse and worse until we meet the surprising resolution. But you need more than well-developed themes to carry a film. The execution needs to be good. 
The Dark Knight is a fantastic film because not only does it have great themes, the filmmaking surrounding it is perfect. Every scene in that film is used to push the story and its characters forward. Whilst in the Godzilla anime, the scenes are used just to talk about what their next big plan is. So essentially, each film boils down to people telling the audience what the third act is going to be. This is just a massive waste of the movie's time and the viewer's time. Now what could improve the anime series? Well, if the acts were condensed into a single two and a half hour film, it might have been better, more fast paced and more coherent and would have been more enjoyable for the audience. Most of the fluff would have been cut out, leaving the bare necessities, we'd see the humans become more desperate in a clearer fashion, we'd get more focus on the important character moments and we'd most importantly get more monster screen time. I appreciate that the director wanted to try something new when he set about making the anime, but there's just so much filler and it breaks so many expectations set by fans of the series. They introduce classic characters like Mechagodzilla and King Ghidorah, but end up leaving fans feeling underwhelmed when they don't live out their full potential. Mechagodzilla is nothing more than an array of turrets, and King Ghidorah is just a ghost. The ideas are there, but the fans need more, and yes, I know Godzilla 2014 has similar ideas by focusing on the human drama over monster action, but the difference from this and the legendary film is that that's a constant journey. The main character has better and more relatable intentions than just kill Godzilla, and when you do finally get the monsters, the film doesn't hold back and the fights are brutal and satisfying, and the final kills alone are worth the price of admission. It's that satisfaction that the anime series is missing, and that's why the fans are left disappointed. We expected more from the company that gave us Godzilla dropkicking a giant cockroach. Now I feel like I've said everything that needs to be said and at this point I'm beating a dead horse. It's undeniable that the series has left fans disappointed, but that doesn't mean it's terrible. It's not even close to being that, and it has a lot of positives to take away from it. It's just lost potential, and it's an absolute shame to have happened to the first and potentially last Godzilla anime. If you haven't watched the anime series and still want to, you've got nothing to lose but time. Check it out, but don't expect much. If you like this video and want to see more analysis of other Godzilla films like a certain 1998 disaster, then subscribe and let us know what you'd like to see next. I've been Alistair from Dangerville, and residents, I'll see you in the next one.